Reactions involving the heat of reaction. Heat of reaction is a state function. And so we can combine individual reactions where we can either look up or measure the heat of reaction. We can combine those into a chemical reaction for which we do not know or cannot measure the heat of reaction. When we do that, we have to be careful what we do with the heats of reactions of each of the individual reactions. And so that probably all didn't make a whole lot of sense. It's okay. We'll go over these little rules and then we'll put everything together. So if we react, I'm sorry, if we multiply a reaction by a factor, then we have to multiply the heat of reaction by the same factor. So if we take this reaction, carbon plus oxygen to form CO2, the heat of reaction for that as written, one mole of this and one mole of that, is going to be minus 393.5 kilojoules. For every one mole of carbon that combusts, it's going to release this amount of energy. If we double the coefficients on this reaction, if we multiply the reaction by two, now we have twice as much carbon, it makes sense that you're going to release twice as much energy. So you multiply the reaction by two, you have to multiply delta H by two. So we end up with minus 787 kilojoules. If we reverse a reaction, which is a lot like multiplying it by negative one, if we write it backwards, so now we've got CO2 decomposing into carbon and oxygen. This is the same reaction as this one. We just reversed it. We're going the other way. Then we change the sign on delta H. If you take water and you freeze it, you have to pull energy out of it to make it colder and freeze it. That's an exothermic reaction. If you go the other direction, you have to put energy in, right? So if it's exothermic one way, it's endothermic the other way. That's why we have to change the sign. If a reaction can be expressed as a series of steps, then delta H for the overall reaction is just the sum of the heats of reaction for each step. This is called Hess's law. The change in enthalpy for a stepwise process is the sum of the enthalpy changes of the steps. So this is um, a concept that's a little tricky for some students to, to grasp. So let's, let's just think a little bit about elevation, okay? So um, we're going up two steps and we're taking this big jump down and then we're going up two other steps and who knows what these individual elevation changes are. But what I'm trying to get across here, I don't know if I'm succeeding at all, but this difference between the final, where we end up, and the initial, is going to equal the sum of these positive changes going up and the negative changes going down. Does that make sense? It's a state change. It doesn't matter how you got there. If you went directly from here to here, or if you went this way up and down and back up again. It's the same thing with heat of reaction. It doesn't matter how you get there. So if we look at A plus 2B has this change, and that is the sum of, I'm sorry, what am I doing here? I think I'm missing something. So we have A plus 2B. Let's see if we can write this over here. A plus 2B goes to C. And then we have C going to 2D. So we have this reaction that is endothermic because the product is higher in energy than the reactants. And then C is decomposing into 2D. So this is delta H1, and this is delta H2. 
if we add these two reactions together, we end up with A plus 2B plus C forms C plus 2D. Well, the C that was present here is still present there, so we can just cross those out, basically. So we have this as being the sum of two reactions, and the enthalpy change for that is going to be the sum of the enthalpy changes for each of the individual steps. Did you follow that? This is yes, and this is no. This is kind of important, this one. Does that make sense? Just like this, where we can, we can measure this difference in many different ways. You can measure going up here and back down and back up again, or just going up, or any other possibility. We can also measure A plus 2B to form 2D. Instead of trying to measure that reaction directly, which might be difficult for a variety of reasons, if we know the enthalpy change for each of these steps, we can see mathematically, we can combine that reaction to get this, then we can combine these. This one was endothermic, this one was exothermic. The net difference, the, the sum of those, this one's positive, this one's negative, the sum is this one. So let's do an example. Find the heat of reaction for this reaction and use these um, smaller reactions. So we have these combinations here. We know the heat of reaction for these guys. We don't know it for this one. So what we have to do is we have to figure out how can we combine these three reactions to make that one. Well, what do we want to end up with? We want to end up with NO as a product and N2O and NO2 as reactants. So let's look at these. Um, this one is opposite of that, um, this one looks like it might be useful. And this one here, this is a reactant. And so this one's probably going to be forwards. The way you do this is you just kind of start. So I'm going to start with this one on the bottom for no apparent reason. Oops, you got to copy them down correctly, otherwise it doesn't work. Come on. So this, this is one of the reactants, so that's nice. Um, this one I want to flip around because I need NO2 as a reactant, and this one has NO2 as a product. So I'm going to put, uh, NO, it's 2NO2. And I'm going to write it backwards. So here is one of my reactants, N2O. I've got N2O over here. My other reactant is NO2, and I've got this over here. My product is NO, and I've got an NO as a product. The problem is, I've also got these guys, oxygen and nitrogen, as products, and I don't want them there. So this reaction might be helpful. So if I put this in here, N2 plus O2 goes to 2NO. So I have two N2s on the right side that I need to get rid of. This reaction will get rid of one of them. So what I need to do is I need to multiply this by two. So I've got two N2s 
my pointer, there we go, two N2s, and I have two N2s over here. And I've got two O2s on the left and two O2s on the right. This is a hard thing to explain. And you're thinking it's a hard thing to follow as well. So, um, what's the best way to do this? I don't know. So, that cancels this, and these two cancel the two O2s over there. Now I still have still have this 2 which is multiplying. This is not good. This isn't I don't like this. I'm going to distribute the 2. Okay? I've got 2 times this whole equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to distribute that. So I've got 2 and 2 and this becomes 4. You okay with that? I took this equation right here and I multiplied it by 2. I doubled it. So I've got 2 N2s, 2 O2s, and 4 NOs. So I've got 2 N2s on the left and the right. It's kind of like the spectator ions. They, they came into the reaction, but they also come out, to the, out of the reaction as the same thing. And so we can cross them out, basically. There's two O2s, and here I've got two O2s as products. Now, let's add this up and see what we've, what we've got here. Well, I've got two and two O's. And I've got two and O2s. And I'm ending up with oh, wait, this one. I've got two NOs and four NOs. That's six NOs. Now, this is um, beginning to resemble this reaction, isn't it? The difference is that this is multiplied by 2, and that is not. So um, let's leave that alone for now. I don't want to combine too many steps. Let's look at what we need to do with the delta H's. So this reaction, 2N2O plus equals 2N2 plus O2. That's this one on the bottom. Did I do anything to it? Did I reverse it or multiply it or anything? No, I didn't. So its delta H is the same. Minus 163.2 kilojoules. How about this one? That's the first reaction, right? But what did I do to it? I reversed it. So that means when I write it this way, I need to change the sign. So delta H, as I wrote it here, is going to be plus 113.1 kilojoules. Because I'm, I'm writing it backwards. This third reaction is this one in the middle. And I doubled it. If I double the quantities, I have to double the energy. So delta H is going to be 2 times 182.6. Ah. Kilojoules. One eighty-two point. Oh, turn the calculator on. One eighty-two point six times two. So that's positive three sixty-five point two kilojoules. For my equation down here, delta H equals the sum of each of the steps. 
So delta H for that reaction is going to be negative 163.2 plus 113.1 plus 365.2. And that's a positive 315.1 kilojoules. This reaction, though, is not quite the same as this one, is it? To get this reaction to be the same as this one, I need to divide by 2, right? If I divide the reaction by 2, I have to divide delta H by 2. So to get this, I've got this number divided by 2. So I divide by 2, and delta H for this One fifty seven point five five, which rounds to one fifty seven point six kilojoules. Any questions? I'm, I'm basically using kind of a trial and error almost. Just you look at it and try to figure it out how to combine these reactions. The things that you can do is you can reverse the direction, write the reactants as products and vice versa. You can multiply or divide the subscripts by numbers to make them work out. Whatever you do to the reaction, you have to do to the delta H's. When you find this combination, that adds up to this reaction, then you add up the delta H's and you get your answer.